what up everybody this week at Bungie it is back welcome everybody I'm the lost Drake you guys know me every single week we do this I just posted up my video from last week but Bungie went ahead and launched this earlier this morning and this morning it was a big big update huge huge and it was freaking awesome and DMG came out with a big post today giving Liana a break which is awesome next week Liana is gonna be back which is fantastic it's gonna be her second twab but anyway I digress let's jump into the content because this week is crazy big news big big announcements so this week at Bungie we are sweeping up all the blues. They gave us a little uh, image of Sweeperbot sweeping up all the blue Ingrams in the background. Obviously, you know, Sweeperbot. Rest in peace. Well, or is he still alive? Nobody knows. He's around. Is he alive? I don't know. Anyway, besides the point, uh, time's been flying by, and we've got a bunch of new information. I'm going to be giving you all the details on the TWAB this week, right before the Witch Queen. We're about three and a half weeks out, and I'm so freaking excited this week we're going to be talking about, about power blue drops gunsmith reputation and some shifts in exotic sources and more over the next twabs we're going to be talking about vanguard rep gambit reworks weapon crafting and void 3.0 but not necessarily in that order so they're going to be giving us information as we go don't forget the patch notes preview and additional weapon tuning details along the way It'll be a fun time, and hopefully we give you some things to chew on each week. We may have a trailer or two share with you before launch. If you haven't been on socials in the last week, you might have missed some of these bite-sized snippets, which I will put those in right now for you guys to check them out. They're actually really cool. They were posted up on Bungie's official Twitter along with Destiny the Game's Twitter. Make sure you guys check them out. They're right here. Go ahead and watch. We'll be right back and talk about all the amazing stuff in the TWAB. It is the mind that must bend to see the truths hidden here. The Hive shouldn't be able to use the light against us. They shouldn't be able to use it at all. So probably the most big and crazy announcement this week in the TWAB was power is not a measure of your guardian's general ability, but a consistent gauge for your player whether or not they're able to tackle or a given challenge. While the Witch Queen won't feature a big overhaul to the ways in which you gain power, we do have some general updates coming on launch day to get returning and new players up and ready for fresh campaigns. So they go on to talk about this and they say in detail, first let's talk about the definition. Some of the things you guys know by heart, but we're always excited to introduce new lights and returning players to information like this. For all of you guys who have slept on Destiny, uh, taken a break, you were irritated with the content or there was something that was happening that pulled you away, now is the best time to come back because this announcement is huge. For any new player coming in, this really gives you that next level. But for anybody who doesn't know, the floor uh, power level is the lowest possible power a piece of gear starting point for a new character. The soft cap is the point in which guardians drop stop being automatically upgrade and powerful gear drops now are the best way to gain power the power cap the power at which powerful drops stop being upgraded pinnacle gear drops are now the only way to gain power and then the hard cap which is probably the hardest and a lot of people complain about the grind but i don't i love it and i think it's really cool when you get into that end game content max possible power with pinnacle drops and ignoring the artifact power. So the artifact power obviously tacks onto your hard cap. That makes you extend past. But this is the craziest news. So starting on February 22nd, the power floor will be updated to 1350, which is pretty much where I'm at right now in Destiny, and a lot of you guys are too. If you're new to the game, obviously it was way, way lower. Um, any player who signs in will be appropriately power leveled to start the Witch Queen campaign even if they've taken a recent break from the game. That is huge for new players. 
for me, it's like, uh, well, I can't really complain about it because it's pretty standard when a new DLC comes out or a new expansion. So whatever, we just kind of absorb it and go. So the big thing though, through general gameplay, players can reach the soft cap of 1500, guys. 1500, I wanna put a big emphasis across the screen, 1500. That is such a huge level gain by earning general gear through activity completions chests and more. This includes rare and legendary drops. Once reaching the soft cap, players will need to earn powerful drops from vendor challenges and other objectives in the game. Once reaching the power cap of 1550, 1550, the only upgrades that players will find are the end game activities that offer pinnacle rewards. Your stretch to the hard cap of 1560, which will be through raids, trials of Osiris, Iron Banner, and other end game activities and PVE sources. So pretty much pretty standard once you get to pinnacle. Most people know that grind if you've been playing Destiny. For anybody who doesn't, that basically just means if you're not doing all the end game content, you're not gonna level up. There will also be some adjustments in pinnacle and powerful sources as they shift nearly to a focus of newer seasonal content and fresh Destiny 2 expansion content offered with the Witch Queen. Keep an eye out on tooltips as you start completing activities as they specifically note the different types of rewards that they offer. We have no doubt that our own more eager players will create guides with a week of launch, but we hope that you power climb is fairly easy to understand once you get your boots on the ground on February 22nd. So basically we're gonna jump into the next part of the segment and that's gonna be designing the economy in easy right. Short answer, absolutely not. Nothing in the game design is easy, especially when tackling the various currencies and exchanges that the Destiny 2 offers. This week, we'll be diving into the economy featuring lead Joshua Kulinski, uh, speaking to some exciting changes on behalf of the team. Joshua goes on to say, beginning in the Witch Queen, blue rare rewards will stop dropping from the playlist activities, uh, crucible, strikes, gambits, etc. Once players have reached the soft cap, Players above the soft cap, 1500 power in the Witch Queen, which we just talked about, will instead see a slight increased chance of receiving legendary rewards from the activities or small amount of legendary shards. Blue weapons and armors will continue to drop from enemies and chests while playing Destiny 2. But we hope that we will reduce the need for players to manage their inventories and reduce the frequency of visiting the Postmaster when returning and running the playlist activities. We have some work ahead of us when it comes to rarities as a subject in Destiny 2. Will blue gear help players increase their power level earlier in the game? We want to look at their place in the overall game. We aren't exactly any major changes in the next few seasons, but we will be spending some time behind the scenes making our future of rare drops all up. Here's a big, big announcement. Gunsmith Reputation. Banshee44 is getting a new reputation system that matches other vendors in the tower, such as Zavala and Shax. So for all of you guys that go to the vendor and you guys seen the updates with Zavala and Shax, with basically it builds up uh, levels as you do stuff um, and turn in bounties, it's going to be the same thing. You guys are going to get guns. Instead of getting guns to materials and weapon telemetries, now weapons will be earning reputation rank and progress with Banshee44 when dismantling legendary and exotic weapons and armor or by completing daily gunsmith bounties. So it is a big, big thing that you guys go in and you dismantle all of your old gunsmith materials and weapon telemetries because they ain't going to do nothing for you guys anymore. Also, and make sure you guys do that before February 22nd so you guys get all that loot and money and gold and all the good stuff and all your glimmer. You definitely want to do that. Um, mods and mod components. We will also be removing mod components from the game, starting in the Witch Queen. Weapons and armor mods sold by Banshee44 and A to 1, respectively, will no longer require mod components to purchase and will instead cost 10,000 glimmer each. Further, as part of the update, we are increasing the number of mods available at each vendor at a single time from two to four. That is huge news and it is so awesome to hear. That is freaking amazing. Another big announcement, Raul's taking over for Spider's material exchange duties in the Witch Queen. So Spider is going bye-bye. Obviously you guys know the, the Forsaken content is getting vaulted. Raul will be taking over all the wares for Bantry 44 and Ada 1 once offered, especially the sale of Enhancement Prisms and Ascendant Shards as noted above. 
This makes space for more mods to be available for purchase during each given week, and Raul will offer these materials at the same price as Banshee 44 and Ada 1 once sold them. Enhancement prisons, uh, 10 enhancement cores, 25 planetary materials, and 10,000 glimmer, and ascendant charts will be 10 enhancement prisons, prisms, if I can speak right, 100 planetary materials, and 50,000 glimmer. Also, as a final note, before we move on to exotic news, Master Raul will also be able to decrypt Umbral Ingrams. Yeah! Death with Umbral Ingrams. Well, they're not dead, but at least we can decrypt them in the tower now. We don't have to go to the helm anymore, which is huge and amazing news. And on other news, Hawkmoon and Dead Man's Tale as February 22nd, 2022, the launch of the Witch Queen, the Harbinger, and the Passage exotic missions will no longer be accessible. The team still wants to preserve the ability for players to obtain random rolls of these weapons. Therefore, instead of adding these items to the monument to the Lost Light, that's a mouthful, as we have done with most of our previous exotics that no longer have sources, these two weapons will show up as part of Xur's inventory each weekend. Every week, Xur will offer a unique role of both Hawkmoon and Dead Man's Tale and will be purchasable to all players that own Beyond Light for the following materials. One Ascendant Shard, one Exotic Cipher, 125,000 Glimmer, and 200 Legendary Shards. But wait! There's more! Oh, that's something fun. The Hawkmoon DMT and Augur Scepter Catalyst will be moved to the playlist activities, Strikes, Crucible, Gambit, Completions, in addition to these three, you will also have be added the ability of three credits that have been absent from Destiny 2 to drop from playlist activities as well. The full list includes Hawkmoon, Dead Man's Tale, Augur Scepter, Outbreak Perfected, Whisper of the Worm, and Fourth Horseman. Outbreak Perfected and Whisper of the Worm both have had the requirements for completing their catalyst updated so that they can be completed without the access of the original activities. So that is very, very awesome news. Okay, so for all of you Raiders out there, this is something that I already called earlier this week. I already knew this was going to happen, but save the raid date, guys. The Witch Queen has a new raid. Surprising? No, of course not. Why we still have a bit more time before the first world race begins, we wanted to get a rally flag planted in the sand for you when you can expect to take on the challenge of the Witch Queen raid. The Destiny 2 Witch Queen Redacted raid will be on March 5th, 2022. I'll make sure I put that big on the screen so everybody can see it at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So that's pretty awesome. Well, having an additional details on the contest mode, bungee rewards, and other need to know information closer to the date. So all of you guys, make sure you guys take off the appropriate time. We're all gonna be raiding. We're all gonna be trying to go for world first. We're all gonna be crushing it. Me and my team, we're definitely gonna be doing that together. So hopefully you guys can tune in over on Twitch. We will be doing that live and we'll also take live feedback from the raid and I'll make sure I post it once we do that as well, giving my live reaction, some of the encounters, and hopefully we can beat it on the first go and get that 24 hour emblem. So to kind of wrap up this TWAB earlier this morning or afternoon, eventually depending on where you live, we deployed a fresh hot fist to address some crashes found in Gambit and Dares of Eternity. Our player support team has quickly run down in case you missed the patch notes and some additional known issues that we're tracking. In this report, I'm not even going to read out the hotfix because it's too many damn numbers, so we're just going to keep moving forward. Ornaments can now be equipped in the Wish Ender Bow, the grasp of Avaris Dungeon. Players will no longer be trapped outside the encounter if they are dead inside the Crystal Tunnel when the encounter begins. In the grasp of Avaris Dungeon, the damage phase with the Ogre Boss will now consistently start after depositing enough Cursed Engrams. Uh, which was a big problem. I really had a problem with that. It kept glitching out and it wouldn't start. We have reverted colorblind settings made in Hotfix, and we'll be looking into making some updates to colorblind settings in the future update. Well-known issues going forward. We all know continuing various issues. Here's a list of the latest issue reported on the forum. When first spawning into an area of activity, hand cannons continues and sometimes don't have ammo and dares of eternity game streaks now give a maximum of 125 points per completion the full list of emergent issues on destiny 2 and players can review on the known issues article inside the help forum and then for quick clarification before we go once the weekend and a few guardians over there scrapping the articles to figure out whether or not iron banner bounties will be removed at the end of the season. It was discovered that we had a slight error published to the website and I wanted to take a moment to set expectations being removed. 
Iron Banner bounties will not be removed at the end of the season. Bounties acquired and completed at any point during the season will be retained after the Witch Queen release. Note, bounties retained for the lost season of the Lost will cap at 1350 power and not give players any bonus power next season upon redemption. Additional note, these bounties will be removed at the end of Season 16 as Saladin will be taking his turn in our rollout of Vendor's rework. Final note, because I have you here, our final Iron Banner of the season will be during the final week of the Season of the Lost. Seasonal bounties related to Season of the Hunt, Season of the Chosen, Season of the Splicer, Season of the Lost will be removed at the end of the season. Bounties from the Tangled Shore destination will be removed at the end of the season. Some daily bounties from general activities and destinations may be removed depending on the objective or rewarding balance on per base bias. Example, handful of Drifter and Gunsmith bounties are being looked at along with some other vendor workouts. Oh dear, did you just confirm the Drifter is getting a pass? Well, shouldn't be surprised we are tinkering with Gambit in Season 16. More on that in the future 12. So that's huge for us, guys. Gambit is finally getting an update and some much needed changes. Super excited about that. Uh, Gambit has been kind of stagnant for a long time. A lot of people hate Gambit. A lot of people love it. It just depends on you. So rule of thumb, if you do not want to lose your rewards, we recommend that you turn in your bounties before the new year of Destiny content hits the service. So all you guys stacking up all those bounties, make sure you guys decrypt them, get your experience, level up as much as you can, get all those mats and get ready to go because... When we start, while some of you are looking to rank up the artifact a bit faster than others, we expect many of the mod unlocks to become completing the campaign and jumping into the quest, activities, and afterwards. Take your time, unlock all the goodies, and we have no doubt you'll enjoy the content. Thanks for stopping by for another TWAB. We got another one of the book guys here. Myself, The Lost Drake. I'm so happy to be doing this, guys. And I hope you guys truly enjoy this content let's keep making sure we do the like subscribe and follow you guys know the routine make sure you turn on the bell so you guys get notifications when i post each and every week along with all my other videos not just about destiny but upcoming reviews and other amazing things so make sure you guys again like subscribe and follow help us grow help us get over that thousand marker let's keep crushing it and again we'll be waiting for liana to come back next week and take the reins on her second twab and finding out more about destiny Thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you all next week.